Hi there. It is Monday. No, it's not. It's Tuesday. All right, I'm off to a really good start. Let's start this whole thing again. Hello there. It's Tuesday. It's May 12th. And I'm Danny Gregory here in the kitchen. You may or may not be in your kitchen, but if you aren't, get thee to the kitchen. Or at least get in there and get some implements. I found this bizarre thing. I mean, check this out. I'm not sure what it is. Is it, it has this bottle opener here? I don't know, I'm not sure if it's a real thing. My wife says, yes, it's a cleaver. Not really, it's not very dull. I mean, it is pretty dull. It has this weird edge. I don't know, but it's gonna be one of the things that I'm gonna be drawing. But, much used of late, not particularly used of late. Cute, found this in uh, my mother-in-law's house, which we successfully sold yesterday. A major thing off our backs is finally selling my mother-in-law's house despite this quarantine and the epidemic and so forth, we managed to unload it. So, um, today we're going to draw in the kitchen, or we're going to draw things in the kitchen, and our inspiration is going to be Onmar. Onmar Wynn. I want to show you a bit of her work. I mean, she makes beautiful things, and she is a, an instructor here at Sketchbook School. You may or may not have encountered her before, but um, she works in all different kinds of media, and she makes food look delicious, doesn't she? And she's a piece of this. This inspired me. I'm not sure that I'm going to be doing watercolor, but I like the kind of assembly of these different things. Some nice superfoods on toast. And these are all British products, some of which may not be familiar to you Yanks. But they're all tasty. So yeah, today we're going to be drawing stuff in the kitchen. You can draw food, you can draw cups, you can draw appliances, you can draw tools, you can draw 
anything you'd like. You can just draw from your imagination if you prefer. You can draw the food that you'd like to have. There's just an endless source of things to draw here in the kitchen. And no matter where you are, you probably at the very least have a kitchen or maybe some kind of rudimentary food storage area in your bivouac. Yeah. I'm sure you have a kitchen. So let's draw in it. Let's draw in the kitchen, folks. Um, here's what the inspiration is. Um, the inspiration is a very important event at Sketchbook School, which is Own Mars special workshop that's going to happen this weekend. It is really an amazing workshop, and I just wanted to show you how she describes it, okay? Because if you haven't signed up for it, you have until you have just about five hours left in which to sign up for it, because we're closing the signups today, because we've got to start arranging stuff, and it's going to be this Saturday. So you've got until noon, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern to sign up, okay? Let me show you what we're talking about here. Um, if I can, let me just, hmm. how about this? Hello, I'm Omar and I'm an illustrator and sketchbook artist. I wanted to share with you a really fun watercolour pen and ink technique we can use for many purposes. I love this technique because you can be really loose and bold with the watercolour and once it's dry, go in with ink and add as much detail as you want. And since many of us have been spending a lot of time at home, we are going to be using items from our kitchens for this workshop. So take a good look at your cupboards or your pantry and find items like packets, boxes of cereal or pasta, jars, tins and even take a peek in your fridge. I'm sure you've got lots of interesting items in your drawers such as wooden spoons and also any cooking utensils. For this workshop it would be great if you have a little bit of experience with watercolour but if not, you should still be able to follow along. And don't worry if you don't have a dip pen and ink to hand because I'll show you how easy it can be to achieve great results with a black fine liner. I can't wait to get started with this workshop, so please join me for this fun event. Pretty cool, right? So that's this Saturday at noon Eastern. And uh, again, it is called the Brush and Line Watercolor and Ink Workshop. So she's going to teach us techniques that she talk, shows you a, bit, a little bit there about how to combine watercolor with, actually in her case, she's using a dip pen. She also uses a regular um, technical marker. So if you've signed up for it, you've already been given um, a full briefing because we email you with a supply list and more detailed explanation. So uh, there is... There is lots of um, stuff to get ready, and you can sign up, let's see, right here, sketchbookschool.com slash workshops, but you got to do it today. You only have a few more hours. Uh, I see a lot of folks here in the audience are joining us, including Jen, Gigi, and Fiona Cahill. That's going to be very exciting. They are the family that draws together and uh, does many other things, I'm sure, but uh, that is really nice. So many of you other people have uh, have signed up, and it's I think it's a great investment um, in yourself because this technique that she teaches is something you can apply not just to drawing in the kitchen, but drawing anywhere, making and really making your watercolors. I don't know, treating them completely differently as a as a drawing medium, but also as a painting medium. Um, it's just. It's so flexible. I mean, I've experimented a lot with it since she taught it to me, and it's been a lot of fun. So uh, it is going to be a lot of fun this weekend. We've also got a new platform, by the way. Those of you who have taken uh, workshops with us before, we had a couple technical problems with our platform last time. We said, you're out of here. We spent the last three weeks looking for a new platform. We've tested it. We tested it with Omar yesterday. Everything seems to be great. So that will be really nice, and you will be alerted to that in the next couple days. So if you sign up for it, in the next uh, two or three days, certainly at least 48 hours before the workshop, you will get detailed explanation as to where exactly to go. It's uh, And as long as you have a decent internet connection, um, 
and you'll be set to go. Works on the iPad too, from what I understand, and that's very exciting. So, all right. Now, what else did I want to talk to you about before we start drawing the kitchen? By the way, while we're talking, you could be going off and finding the things that you want to draw. You can listen to me from afar as you rummage through your drawers and decide what, what it is you want to, you want to um, work on. Um, what else? Oops, sorry about that. Um, what else is, uh, yes, this is what I want to talk about too. So we have this thing, Danny's List, which is basically an email that I write every week to those people who are interested. And if you'd like to join, you can sign up at this, at this address. Now, I've been getting the most fantastic fantastic emails from so many people, so many that I've only begun to be able to answer them. Um, they, the emails go out on Friday and then all weekend long, all these incredible emails flow in from around the world. Some of them are just so moving, so fascinating, and they're kind of discussions people are having about the things that I've been writing. And that is so gratifying. It's so nice to to know that what I'm saying has some meaning. Some people um, tell me about their experiences related to what I'm talking about. Some people um, kind of help, and help me to deepen the thoughts that I'm giving by, by adding to it or, or debating it and so forth. It's just been fantastic. So if you've written to me, thank you, thank you, thank you. I promise you I am writing back to every single person. It's just taking me some time to wade through all of them, read all of them, think about a, decent response and write it. In the next couple days, I promise I will have done that. So please feel free to write to me. I look forward to hearing what you have to say and writing back. So this has been going very well, and I'm very, um, very, it's just been really fun. I'm really having a good time writing stuff and uh, sharing it with you. And also, what else? We have the sketchbooksfold.com slash guide, which is a place where you can go Right now, it's called the Coronavirus Creativity Guide. One day, I'm hoping we can clip off the coronavirus part of it and just call it our Creativity Guide. It's a place where you can go on our website where we list all the things to do that are free, that we're making. So it's videos, it's things we've written, it's um, things you can, you can uh, look at from other people, and things that we think are interesting, things to do. So if you're just looking for, hmm, want, want to do something, Check that out, sketchbookschool.com slash guide. And there is, we're, we're always adding to it and tweaking it. So if you have any other thoughts that you want to add, uh, resources that you'd like us to share, let us know, and we will be glad to do that too. All right. I think that's all we have to talk about. Let's get down to drawing in the kitchen and uh, see where we're at. So you've seen Omar's work. You don't have to do what she does, but... I like the kind of graphic simplicity of a lot of things she does, combined with really interesting textural stuff. So, you know, I'm going to be drawing on the iPad today, and uh, let's see where we go. Let's see where you go, because this could be an interesting experiment in, um, in cooking up something new in the kitchen, right? And also thinking, like, if you do, in fact, want to draw... Um, you know, a lot of a lot of objects. Like, you know, you might want to think about how are you going to uh, arrange them on the page. I'm going to start with this very strange cleaver thing, just because it's sort of fascinating to me. Um, and here we go. Kitchen is a great place to draw, you know? I think we all, we all have this notion like, oh, you should have a really nice studio if you're, an art, if you're going to be a serious artist. Personally, I've never really had one. The closest I came to was a few years ago. I had a garage, um, and that was where I did some stuff. But by and large, I have worked wherever I can. And that's one of the nice things I like about being a sketchbook artist is, you know, you can set up anywhere. And that is, that's one of the handy things about it. So, um, so yes, yeah, so this is, this is my preparation 
perhaps for thinking about Onmar's workshop. Um, one of the things that she does is she, she kind of shows you how to pick things that would be interesting to draw, which is, which is useful. Um, she, she says, she goes through her kitchen at the beginning of the workshop and she'll be telling us as she, as she goes through it, like what, what does she think is interesting and why does she think it's interesting? Um, you know, what is it about a particular object or product that she thinks deserves drawing? So that's a useful thing to get her perspective and uh, maybe to help you as you work your way through your own kitchen. All right, next I'm going to work on this pizza cutter. It's not a very good pizza cutter, I have to be honest. I've used it once. We made some pizza. Well, we defrosted some pizza, I should say. Um, so, yes. So, yeah. So, um, that has... You know, if you know me, you know, I don't spend a lot of time on my drawings. Well, let's not say that. I don't spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time drawing. I don't spend a lot of time on my individual drawings, necessarily. I like being kind of fast and reactive. You don't have to be. You can take your time and maybe get a better likeness than I do. Your choice. I like to just knock them out. Sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's a disaster. Tune in to see which it's going to be on any given day. Today, it's okay. Yeah. Uh-oh. This happens sometimes here. Technology is so amazing and so annoying. All right, here we go. Creature number two. Um, Let's see, what else? Okay, this guy. These. And this is an incredible piece of design, I think. Many, many people have created um, alternatives to it. But I can't say that they've bettered it. Do you? Do you think so? I mean, there's all kinds of dang fangled bottle openers corkscrews, but in the end, I think this classic one is so good. I mean, I guess it's the kind of thing that technology could improve upon, but sometimes not. I mean, sometimes it's just pure design. It's just, it's just a pure, it's like a hammer. You know, you can probably make better hammers. I think from time to time people have tried, but there's not always a need to. Sometimes, this is a thing that we talk about a lot. We talk about it at sketchbook school. I talk about it in my life. Less is better. It's a difficult, it's a good mantra. It's a very difficult one to live with. Less is better. Because so often, just coming up with more is, it's easier, right? It's easier to go shopping. It's easier to, I mean, not these days, but in general, it's easier to just go out and get something else. It's easier to just add a bit more to what you're doing. I mean, this is a problem we often have with art making, right? So... You know, we, we 
keep working on something, which I think is a good idea. I think it's better than giving up. But we keep working, and then suddenly we're stuck. And what do we do? We say, well, let me put a bit of white over there. Let me add a bit more of this. Let me add a bit more of that. And I don't know. Sometimes it helps. Sometimes you do transcend and you get to another place. But honestly, I think the goal would be to be more efficient and in the end, just knock it out the first time. And how do you do that? It's difficult. But you do it by taking your time. You do it by practicing. You do it by developing skills, developing experience, developing different ways of, of coping with pr the problems that you invariably encounter when you are drawing. Right? So you go, oh no, now I did this, what do I do about that? You learn, you figure something out, and then you don't do it the next time. So yeah, so again, that's another instance of less being more, because you somehow, you know, you've, you've Honed your skills and and so you, you know which knife to reach for, whether you use the cleaver or the paring knife. So yeah. of time, but less is more. It's a good, it's a good mantra, but as I said, difficult to, to, to sustain because it, was, it seems like more is good. It seems like more is good, but you know, gluttony is not always the answer. Boy, I keep cra crashing today. Sorry about this. Yeah, this happens sometimes with my iPad. Just suddenly decides to give up the ghost. Um, I mean, in the kitchen, you know, I think less is sometimes more. Sometimes it's better to not keep adding salt. How are you guys doing out there? Um, the set makes a nice point. Drawing while cooking makes both activities nicer. Just one minute kitchen sketches before keeping the veggies from burning. That's good. That's true. That's true. It's also could be a recipe for disaster if you are cooking something that uh, <clears throat> needs your attention. Um, all right, here we go with the next thing. Kind of old beaten up can opener. Again, this is, as I mentioned, the, um, I've been clearing out my mother-in-law's house now for, uh, I think it's almost six months we've been working on this thing. Um, but yeah, and we have all these various implements that uh, kind of handy just because for the first time in a long time we've needed to stock a new kitchen because we're in this house that we find ourselves in because of the quarantine here in Phoenix. Um, but. So in the process of cleaning out my mother-in-law's house, 
can find these various things and go, oh, maybe we could use that for something. And uh, we'd have to buy a new one again, less being more. I mean, when it comes to watercolor, there's a fine balance again between less and more. Um, keep slathering on watercolor, eventually it ceases to be watercolor. Sometimes it turns into mud, sometimes it turns into just a mess, but Those of you who've taken our class called Watercolor Rules and how to break them will perhaps remember Ian Sidaway and all of the many things that he taught us about how to use watercolor and really how much you want to have on your brush, how much you want to have on your palette. These are all things one needs to consider it's not, it's not like tempera paint that you had when you were in grade school. Watercolor is more delicate medium than that, um, than the way we used to use it. And also to get the magical effects, and the magical effects of watercolor are how it combines with the paper that it's on, you know, and uh, the way in which the paper shines through, and how beautiful that can be. Um, in the end, watercolor is about transparency. And having conversations with Owen Mar about this workshop that she's been doing. You know, that's been that's been an interesting thing. I've learned a lot from just having these conversations with her about how she sees watercolor. Um, you know, she's a really experienced illustrator, and watercolor is, is is kind of her main medium. She's actually works on the iPad a bit too, but um, so. But I think the real art of what Omar does is this combining this watercolors with dip pen and ink, which I think is just so beautiful. And it's it's something I've always tried to do, but you know, there's a temptation, I think, when we're using watercolor and we don't entirely know what we're doing, to use it as as a coloring medium, you know, just to add some color. And Certainly it's adequate at that, but you know, you don't want to just use it to fill in flat shapes necessarily. You know, you want it to be the kind of magical organic thing that it is. I think I think in uh, that watercolor rules class, I think I talked about the idea of watercolors and jazz and how in some ways Painting with watercolor can be completely um, an improvisational exercise where you never know quite exactly what's going to come up. You know, even the most experienced artists, watercolor artists, still struggle with the occasional kind of random thing that watercolor will do, and and you know certainly being experienced helps a lot. But what's, I think, so great about watercolor is the fact that it's an unpredictable medium. You never quite know how the water and the paper uh, are going to interact with each other. You never quite know what the, you know, I mean, again, you learn more as you do it, but there's still that, that 
pain where suddenly something gets away from you and you have to you have to respond. And I, I think that's one of the, the joys of it, frankly, is that serendipitous magic that, that happens now and then. And uh, it's also something I think that when you're not used to it, when you're first starting out, can be pretty terrifying. And you can think, oh no, I'm just going to make a big mess. And making a mess is certainly part of learning. It's certainly a part of what you pick up as you're doing this. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't do it. It just means it may not turn out exactly the way you think it's going to. And that's, that's cool too, I think, sometimes. So I happen to have picked basically metal things to draw today, and uh, that has led a certain kind of cohesion to what I've drawn, just because they're all kind of flat gray metal with um, spots of color, and um, yeah, there you go. So. You know, I mean, I, I could, I would, I think that this would be nicer with some texture, so I might try that. Well, let's try it now. Why not? We have the technology. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep playing with this later on. I need to engage you in all the steps and blunders of this experiment. But hopefully you're having fun on your own and you are uh, doing some, some fine drawing. Catherine Cross comes in with an interesting response. I don't care for the electronic drawing, she says, but it does look nice. Thank you, Catherine. I like a little electronic drawing myself, but uh, yes, I appreciate your input. Um, Jen says, I like how strong lines make the vintage tools graphic and modern. It's true. It's true. It's, I didn't really capture the, um, like if you take these, these spoons, if you can see them here, okay, I'm in there. Um, they have all this kind of distress thing. I think that's why I wanted to add some texture to it, which um, which is part of studying it. Because these things are made of some kind of aluminum, I guess. That's kind of pewterish. And this and that I think I mean you could spend a lot of time actually doing much more detailed drawings of these things and I think that would be probably uh, a worthwhile exercise. Again, this strange thing is interesting because of the shape, but not really interesting because of the texture, because it's kind of a probably a modern thing and kind of inexpensively made. But these spoons, you know, they have life to them. I mean, they've probably sat in my mother-in-law's kitchen for 50 years. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got this kind of erosion that's happened. And you can really get into studying that and drawing it even. You can even go in and really capture all the details of that. So all kinds of things that can happen when you plunge into it. Um, yeah. All right, Catherine. Um, am I a watercolor and ink artist? I am. I am. I do watercolor. I do ink. Some people call me an artist. Um, and watercolor is um, a very important thing, uh, sketchbook medium. Uh, I would say the the in order of priority, I would say number one is ink. In, water, in sketchbooks, whether it's a fountain pen, a drawing pen, a 
dip pen, a ballpoint pen. Ink is certainly the first thing we use in sketchbooks, but um, most sketchbook artists who I know then also move to watercolor and use watercolor in lots of different ways, whether it's, um, you know, to just to draw with, because you can actually draw with watercolor, or whether it's to color uh, an ink drawing, if you've used waterproof ink, or is it to um, just add a little bit of texture, or if it's to do a full-blown watercolor in your sketchbook, that can work too. Uh, or to combine it, as many do, with colored pencils, or watercolor ink and colored pencils in the same drawing. Um, or other things, you could use multimedia, you could use col uh, mixed media, you could use collage, you could use um, different kind of media that you put on top of your watercolor. It's kind of endless. I know uh, an artist who does um, watercolor and then puts uh, essentially tissue paper into the watercolor, layers, um, little pieces of tissue paper and a kind of a collage effect that's really beautiful. There's just endless things. I mean, that's why we teach a class on watercolor specifically, a six-week class where we go into lots of different techniques and lots of ways that different artists use it. Uh, gouache is another form of watercolor that we use. Water gouache is, of course, opaque watercolor, so a slightly different medium, but it's it's a beautiful thing. And uh, it is a lot of fun. So, yeah, if you want to know more, go and check out this, this uh, workshop that we're doing this weekend, or you name it, you know, take, take one of our other classes. Okay, that is, that's all I have for today. Um, it has been nice talking to you. Again, um, I, I look forward to any more emails that you want to send me, and I will certainly be responding to them. And I will see you in a couple of days on Thursday. We will do something new. Um, and if I'm always eager for any suggestions you have as to things you would like to do here in our live drawing parties, but uh, I conduct them on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Kosha has one on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which originates on, on uh, Instagram, but then appears here also at noon on YouTube. So uh, you can always find some inspiration every day from us and, and a live activity to join us for. So I will see you, and remember you now have just over four hours to sign up for Owen Mars Workshop. I will see you there on Saturday. I can't wait, and I hope you're excited too. See you again, and thanks for joining me in the kitchen. It was a lot of fun.